हेलो 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 एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी श्री शिवाजी कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस अकोला basically this uh, lecture series is organized for the students of pg botany and also some of the uh, ug students are connected with uh, this lecture series uh, to online mode so i welcome you all honorable chairperson president uh, principal of our college dr uh, kulat sir chief guest dr ashish raut iqsc coordinator of our college uh, dr uh, ps kokate madam head department of botany sri shivaji college arts commerce and uh, science akola all the uh, faculty members of the department and my dear students of uh, post graduation botany and ug students and all the other uh, students and uh, resource persons dr uh, datta dhale sir dr mk desetriwar sir and uh, uh, dr mv kaure sir from uh, different university the different institutes before going in detail uh, i invite the head of the department dr kokate madam to throw some light on the organization of this uh online lecture series ma'am please good morning everyone am i audible yes ma'am so uh chief person of today's guest lecture series program uh, dr al kulat sir respected principal of our institute then uh, dr ashish raut sir who is the iqc coordinator of our institute the uh, senior faculty of our department dr uh, deepak koche sir who is the professor and the chief organizer of this guest lecture series and uh, senior faculties from uh, our department teaching faculties then adop teachers chb teachers research students and specially the students of post graduation for whom this uh, lecture series is organized now we are here uh, to listen the eminent persons in the botany who are the resource person for today's guest lecture series dr koche sir will introduce him, um, all those resource person while uh, they will deliver their lecture so on behalf of department first of all i would like to welcome them all Uh, on behalf of our department as well as personally also i would like to uh, welcome them uh, and uh, thank them to accept this uh, invitation for delivering the uh, your valuable information in the form of lectures to our pg students now the main objective the aim of this organization is to the uh, students who acquaint with the recent knowledge and the information which they got the expertise in the specific subject so that is the main objective and for that we are organizing and this is the third year we are organizing the guest lecture series for the pg students and also we are organizing the same type of guest lecture series for the ug students but for the ug students we are organizing the guest lectures for the alumni of our department who are working as assistant professor at various reputed uh, institutes and they are delivering their knowledge to the ug students on the topic from the syllabus so i welcome you all uh, again and i'm being a thankful and grateful to uh, have you with us and i will uh, like to thank uh, the organizer also who is organized uh, this uh, lecture series in such a nice way uh, 
at the same time i would like to thank our uh, principal who had given us uh, the permission to uh, organize the guest lecture series and i am thankful to dr ashish south sir who is uh, here uh, for the inaugural function so thank you thank you very much thank you ma'am uh, now i request uh, dr ashish raut sir uh, for his valuable guidance raut sir please ha <coughs> good afternoon everyone uh, chairman of this uh, three days guest lecture series honorable principal dr al kulat sir uh, head department of botany honorable dr pratiksha pukat madam convener dr deepak kochi sir all the teaching faculty members and resource person who have joined for this guest lecture series and my dear students every year department of botany organize uh, the guest lecture series for ug and pg students uh, to expo to get the exposure of student from the different type of experts in the field of botany uh and that's why this guest lecture series is very important and fruitful for the students and i know that all the students uh, join this guest lecture series and take the benefit of the same uh without taking uh, too much time i wish this guest lecture series a grand success and best wishes for this guest lecture series thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you for your best wishes for this event uh, now we are moving forward for the further proceedings uh, today we are having as we are know today we are having an online lecture series from three different uh, of three different uh, eminent personas the first lecture uh, will be of dr d a dhale sir sir good afternoon good afternoon everybody um, now i am briefly introducing uh, this personality so you may know about uh, the work and the overall features of this eminent persona so dr dhale sir is working as professor department of botany uh, lkpr bhogre college dhule uh, affiliated with Kavitri Bainabai Choudhary North Maharashtra University Jalgaon sir has about uh, 20 years of teaching and research experience uh, uh, he is awarded with 18 different awards like academic excellence award 2020 distinguished faculty award uh, 2019 eng scientist award in 2017 and many more the uh, important thing is that his name was appeared in the list of world scientist list and the university ranking in 2021 uh, sir has completed two uh, research projects funded by ugc again uh, five research students are working uh, under uh, his guidance journals also published 18 book chapters and six books are to his credit he also have given expert talks of around uh, on around 40 different um, events and uh, also guided uh, several students for their pg as well as uh, other research work so um, we can say that we are having a right persona amongst us and uh, uh, definitely the student will benefit from, from his guidance so uh, sir welcome you thank you sir namaste now, over to you, everybody sir. Okay. okay can i share my slides sir namaste sir yes namaste dhale sir namaste, namaste ma'am pratiksha ma'am namaste is it visible
सर माय स्लाइड्स इज विजिबल यस विजिबल विजिबल सर ओके सर ओके सर थैंक यू श्री शिवाजी कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस अकोला ऑर्गेनाइजेस ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज फॉर दिस सीरीज द अदर रिसोर्स पर्सन्स डॉक्टर एम के देशट्टीवार सर डॉक्टर एम व्ही कवळे सर अँड चेअरपर्सन ऑफ धीस सिरीज प्रिन्सिपल डॉक्टर ए एल कुलट सर ऐक्यूसी कॉर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर ए एस राऊत सर प्रोफेसर अँड हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट डॉक्टर प्रतीक्षा कोकाटे मॅडम कन्व्हेनर ऑफ धीस सिरीज प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर दीपक कोचे सर ऑर्गनायझिंग कमिटी मेंबर्स डॉक्टर व्ही एस पाटील मॅम व्ही एस पाटील सर मिस्टर एन बी चौकंडे डॉक्टर ए व्ही ओके डॉक्टर एस ए राठोड डॉक्टर आर एन पाटील अँड फॉर माय लेक्चर गेस्ट डॉक्टर विद्या पाटील मॅम विच इज द बी ओ एस मेंबर ऑफ कवायत्री बाईनाबाई चौधरी उत्तर महाराष्ट्र विद्यापीठ जलगाव फॉर दी बॉटनी ऑल दी इमिनंट पर्सन्स टुडे आय हॅव अ टॉपिक नेम्ड फार्मॅकोग्नोस्टिक स्टडी ऑफ मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स आय एम गोईंग टुवर्ड्स दी फार्मॅकोग्नोसी ऑफ मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स as we know that medicinal plants are the plants that have a recognized medicinal use it may be from tradition trial and error basis their uses ranges the production of mainstream pharmaceutical products to herbal medicine preparations it means the herbal medicine is one of the oldest form of medicinal treatment in human history and could be considered one of the forerunners of modern pharmaceutical trades in this way medicinal plants are considered as a rich resource of ingredient which can be used in the drug development either pharmacopoeias or non non pharmacopoeial or synthetic drugs in this way medicinal plants have a part from the medicinal use herbs are used in natural dyes paste control food perfumes tea and so on in many countries different kinds of the medicinal plants or the herbs are used to keep ants flies mice fleas away from the home and offices in this way these medicinal plants have a great importance in our daily life approximately about 25% of the today's prescription drugs comes from the plant extract only about 15% of the known plant species have been screened for their medicinal purposes and 85% are remains in this way most of the medicinal plants come from the tropics which you belongs to most of the medicinal plants have been identified by indigenous people by trial and error 50% of the 250000 plant species are from the tropics which we we all belongs to at least 10000 species in the tropics have not yet been identified up to, to up to date this is an many number which you have a great space to study different plants which is the part of our daily life that is the garlic and onion why i am showing the picture of these plants because whenever we considered a medicinal plant we think so the medicinal plants are found in various forest deep forest 
ever green forest and so on but our ancestors have the great history they found the medicinal plants and they included the most of the plants in our daily diet because the medicinal plants have their own property which is necessary for your daily life and that's why the garlic and onion have the great value in our daily food and they have the great importance in medicinal plant and by this professor nk dubey from banaras hindu university they are patented eight different patents from the garlic for the medicinal value in this way we can identify the different products like the organosulfur compounds from the leaves anti carcinogenous and antimicrobial activity from both of the garlic and allium sepa or the onion different toxic compounds which are present in the high amounts in this way another one important medicinal plant or the daily important plant is in the ginger over different 12 compounds with antioxidant activities and greater than vitamin e are isolated from this ginger which is and very effective for your producing the immunodeficiency it have also anti tumor anti emetic property that's why the ginger having and a part of daily life there is a well known medicinal plant which is known as brahmi whenever you looking uh, add known as brahmi amla ke tel they showing the plant which is in second picture and the second picture is, is known as centella asiatica and bacopa moneri which is and brain tonic is the jala brahmi so as a botanist we are the botanist please do not confuse while identifying a brain tonic and hair tonic both are the common name have the similar names both are the brahmis but the back of amoneri is the brain tonic and the centella asiatica is the hair tonic while well known medicinal plant is known as the shatavari the plant have more than the 100 leaves uh, sorry 100 roots that's why it is called as a shatavari but some of the vaidas and some of the medicinal practitioners told the shatavari gives us age of more than 100 years so it is known as shatavari and belong this statement you can find the anti aging of the properties of this shatavari reputed shatavari churn and uh, various components or the ayurvedic preparations more than 100 preparations are found in the market which are prepared from the shatavari well known is the shatavari kalp which is used as an galacto gag there is an plant which is known as gudmar as the botany student different students of the advanced branches and the pharma branches and the chemistry branches they told ayurveda have the late results plants have the late results but with the help of this example which is known as gudmar scientific name is gymnema silvestris i am surely told you that whenever you get chewed a plant a leaf of this plant you get a result within 30 second whenever you get a medicine like a paracetamol or whatever there it needs 
get effect minimum 5 or 10 minutes. But we have the plant known as Gudumar. It gives its result, direct result within 30 seconds. It means plants also have the, some chemicals which have greater medicine than the synthetic drugs. It means the sentence which other people told the plants have the late result. This plant is the ideal example for that peoples which shows directly blood sugar level downs and it disables your sweetening taste of mouth within 30 seconds. It means अगर आप बच्चे कुछ समझ नहीं रहे तो उनको मैं अपनी लैंग्वेज में बोल देता हूँ ये गुड़मार एक ऐसा पौधा है जो पौधा 30 सेकंड में आपके माउथ का स्वीटनर मतलब स्वीट का टेस्ट निकाल देता है इसका एक पत्ता आप चबाए तो विदिन 30 सेकंड आपको शुगर खाए शुगर की कोई भी चीज खाए आपको वो स्वीट नहीं लगेगी वो मिट्टी जैसी लगेगी विदिन 30 सेकंड रिजल्ट देने वाला ये प्लांट है जिसका नाम है गुड़मार इट कैन फाउंड इन एवरीवेयर इन एनी फॉरेस्ट the well known plant is known as the sadafuli catharanthus rogius which having the anti cancer property and the those we are having the study of the plants have no value uh, that people i told that the 1 gram or 1 ml of the medicine prepared from the vinca which having the cost more than 40000 40000 per ml which is known as vinblastin. Vincristine and vinblastin, these are the chemicals synthesized from this plant. And the plant is very well known and very common found around us. Sarpaganda is an that mag magic plant. Today's life, we have the many problems with the mental health. We are getting isolated with the help of modern technologies. There are so many engineers, there are so many uh, different types of the workers with the help of the burdens of lot of work, they get affected the mental problems. In ancient world, age, when there are the elephants getting uncontrolled due to mental disorders, that time the elephants और the हत्ती जो इसका नाम ही पागल की दवा है जब हत्ती पागल हो जाते थे तो राजा महाराजाओं के जमाने में इस पौधे की रूट वो हत्ती को दी जाती थी ताकि हत्ती काबू में आए टुडे ड्यू टू मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड मॉडर्न 4G 5G एंड 6G टेक्नोलॉजी मेनी एंड मोर पीपल्स गेटिंग द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दिस hypertension and different brain problems and this having the different types of the chemicals which get control our brain this is a well known plant which is known as nirgudi vitex nigendo whenever we have the pain whenever we have the trouble in our body we just got on the pharma shop and collecting the tablet known as painkiller whenever we get the painkiller the pain is going disable but we are getting to trouble while your mouth losing your taste your next day morning getting various problems your digestion or digestive system get collapse it means a tablet of painkiller destroys all your flora microflora from your body and the plant is known as nirgudi is a very beautiful painkiller in our ancient age whenever there is a bull working in the farm whenever they get affected the farmers relieve him with the help of this plant 
if the plant get relief to bull which having the more than 20 times of human get relief with this help then why human is not getting the relief from this plant this is necessary to identify the component which is having the painkiller capacity whenever we are going to study the ashoka which is an indian medicinal plant which is known as saraka ashoka which is the medicine of different medicinal preparation which is known as the sita ashoka and sita ashoka is the saraka ashoka which is given in the first plant and we are looking in the second plant is the polyanthus longifolia but name is the same ashoka but the polyanthus longifolia or uh, polyanthia longifolia have no any compound which is used as saraka ashoka that is the ashoka which is known as the sita ashoka so don't be confused with ashoka which is a polyanthia longifolia with saraka ashoka saraka ashoka is the only medicinal plant its root bark is an medicinal plant a well known medicinal plant have prune for its antiviral antifungal antibacterial property which is an bhumi amalki phyllanthus amaranthus more than 10 times of the sweetener which is need to find out its sweetening agent which is known as the abreus precatorius well known diuretic plant which dissolve the most of the kidney stones or the different types of the stones found in human they are the dissolved with the help of these seeds which is known as the gokharu seeds and getting this from this plant is known as tribulus terrestris gulwel is and the very well known plant in the corona the plant have given so many money to the tribal peoples of nandurbar they have earned about more than 4 crore rupees the export from the only one district nandurbar having 4 crore rupees nandurbar ke ek jile mein 4 crore se jyada uh, export of this plant have been taken another one uh, well known plant is the kalmeg andrographis paniculata whenever we getting temperature in your body paracetamol reduces your temperature within 5 minutes but this plant also able to reduce your body temperature within 2 or 3 minutes this having the property this is known as the kalmeg there is a kudasal the same plant having different drugs Hularina popsens, the old name is and Hularina antidysentrica, the species name having its property. The bark of the plant is having the property which is known as antidysentry. And the same plant having the seeds which is known as Indrajava. Means if you are using to bark, then it is known as the Kudasal. And whenever you are using the its seeds, then it is known as the Indrajava means same plant having the two drugs. The one well known fragrance plant, which is known as Lata Kasturi, Abelmoscus mosas, which is known as Kasturi Bhendi, it having a great fragrance, edible fragrance. Today's we have the lot of synthetic, synthetic fragrance, but due to this synthetic fragrance, it may be found some carcinogenous materials. You may get affected with the synthetic fragrance and this plant gives natural aroma which is known as lata kasturi abel moscus kasturi bhendi it is commonly called as kasturi bhendi with the help of plants we can synthesize the different colors also i have made this red color from the bixa olerina which is known as sendri and this is edible color Today's uh, fast food, today's life, 
we are very much dependent on the fast food and every fast food i am telling about uh, every hotel preparation how must included the synthetic red color and uh, they having the carcinogenous property synthetic color have the carcinogenous property and due to this uh, not only the carcinogenous property the different surveys are found uh, in the recent days mahanagar palika of bombay have a survey from for up to 10 standard students for diabetes and they found 3000 cases affected by the diabetes in bombay municipal corporation in this way the pattern of life which is dependent on the fast food they have these like synthetic products and that's why they get different troubles that is the if below 10 students having the 3000 cases of the diabetic then what is the next generation what is the future of next generation so as a botanist you have the alternatives for these synthetic drugs and this is the best synthetic color preparation drug which is known as the pixaurelina beautiful color also developed from the beauty monos monosperma you also prepare a home product and also study on these phylanthus emblica vitamin c means phylanthus emblica amla a rich source but vitamin c is the water soluble vitamin whenever we whatever processed it may be avla kanti it may be muravla it may be different preparations of avla which are getting boiled but there is a not loss of vitamin c as a botany student you found out which of the fibers are found in the phylanthus emblica which are get collected or get binded vitamin c which has never lost due to any treatment and this is our duty to prepare such product or synthesis uh, uh, instead of different processing you may prepare with a simple home treatments this is the jyotish mati jyoti means future mati means buddhi means future means a brain which having a future buddhi jo future ka bol sake aisa iska naam hai silastrus paniculata and this silastrus paniculata is found in our region which is known as famous region toranmal and these are the uh, our uh, tribal peoples which are prepared oil from the jyotishmati which is used as a brain tonic in this way there is a vast list of the medicinal plant i have the 500 medicinal plants list but due to limit of the uh, time i am not going to details about the plants i am just showing a list of some of the plants and application of these plants and we are going towards the our next topic which is known as the pharmacognosy if you know very well about the medicinal plants then go towards the pharmacognosy up to this you may understand every plant having some of the properties and these properties we may go to analyze on the advanced branch which is known as the pharmacognosy pharmacognosy is an important branch of applied science which deals with the study of structural physical chemical biochemical and sensory character of natural drug that is mean by crude drug that is the plant origin or animal origin as though we are the students of plant uh, plants or the botany we may con concentrate on the plants only it means it is also include the study of crude drugs that is the medicinal substance in their natural or unprepared that is if you are going to process whenever before the process 
you are going to study the plant which is known as the crude drug that is the pharmacognosy deals with the history of drug sources of drug distribution of drug cultivation of drug collection of drug identification of drug preparation of drug evaluation of drug preservation of drug use and commerce all these steps are followed for the gate economics and these are the crude whenever you are studying this drug in unprepared condition the drug is known as crude drug every leaf every stem every, every rhizome every bark is the every seed is the crude drug this pharmacognosy having the cultural history in different culture or different region religion and culture the pharmacognosy involved that is uh, we are looking western medicine pharmacognosy is also in the unani ayurveda orient greek and african system all this having the pharmacognosy there is a vast scope of pharmacognosy because a medicine is prepared by the pharmacy man medicine is given to the patient by the doctor a doctor is not known about the medicine or doctor is also not known about the plant and the pharmacist which is going to prepare the medicine he is also not known about the medicinal plant so identification and proper correct identifying plant is the responsibility of a botany student which is going to study the pharmacognosy it means our duty getting the link between a pharmacist and doctor so it have the great scope more than 100 plants are used in modern medicine in various parts of the world for the synthetic of organic chemistry or organic chemical drugs in this way for this correct identification it is necessary to evaluate drug for proper identification for proper preparations and this is done with the help of the studies which is based on the chemical biological physical etc and this standardization done with the help of standardization standardization means confirmation of its identity and determination of its purity and detection of natural nature of adulterant by various parameters like the morphological microscopic physical chemical and biological observations it means going towards the standardization why standardization is necessary here is i am going to show you an example of a paper published in a journal title of the paper is chemical composition and medicinal uses of anacallus pyridrum and the worker is studying on this plant anacallus pyridrum the drug name common name is known as the akalkara and due to his common name akalkara the worker is found a plant around him is known as the akalkara and he prepared the different drug from this akalkara but indian medical association for the ayurveda have shown a list of anacallus pyridrum which is having this plant and the worker is going on study this akalkara akalkara have the menthol in your, in its flower but the anacallus pyridrum having the drug in its root here no leaf no flower is used here the part of the plant is used as a root in this way the standardization of drug is necessary whenever you are going to identify a plant with the help of google lens and the google they give the different plants have different names this is the bixa plant 
which found as the Malotas Philippines. It means Google is not surely identified your plant. Google also identified this plant, medicinal known, medicinally known as Dremia indica. Dremia indica is in Jagli Kanda, and the Google is showing Dremia indica is in the black musli, kali musli. In this way, this one and Akalkara, Spilanthus acmela, studying a different species which is not belong to Spilanthus acmela. In this way, there are lots of examples found on, in the today's science. They without identification, they without determination is quality, they without determination is purity, they are going to study its drug. So, for evaluation of drug, it is necessary to identify, determine quality and purity. And this is the first step which is get proper identification. Proper identification is done. Every PG college, a taxonomist which identified the plant, another well known authentic person or uh, institute is known as the Botanical Survey of India. BSI. And for this BSI or for your botanist department, you may prepare and herbarium. Herbarium have the standard size. It may have the 41.5, 29 centimeter standard size of the herbarium. Also put the information on the right corner. It having the label 77 into 12 centimeter. And whenever you are preparing a herbarium, you should prepare a plant part with useful drug for the proper identification for pharmacognosy. And also take update. Also take update from the various resources. The plants internationally, plants get changing their names. For example, up to the date, Khair, Akashia Katachu, which is known as Akashia Katachu, the name gets changed to Senegalia Katachu. Pandra Khair, which is known as Akashia Perungnia, which is Senegalia Perungnia. Sembi, Akashia Penata, which is Sensalia uh, Penata. Devabul, Akashia Farnesiana is the Vaichelia Farnesiana. Hiver, Akashia Leucophilia is the Vaichelia. It means Akashia Nilotica is the Vaichelia Nilotica. Means up to date we call the Arjuna, which is known as the Terminalia Arjuna. Now it is an Terminalia. Tunisia. Up to the date, Nerium oleander is the Nerium indicum. And in this way, so many plants have get updated their names internationally. So, as a student of botany, as a student of pharmacognosy, you should go towards the proper identification and proper recent names. And after the recent name, proper the identification, you must go towards the quality. For the quality, you, mo you may go towards the purity, proper identification, quality assurance. And for the evaluation, evaluation, you may go five types of the evaluation. The organoleptic means which organ of the plant is going to use it. Microscopic, under the microscope, as the botany students already study microscope for the identification of anatomy, identification of dermal, and so, biological testing, chemical testing, and physical. In this way, for the organoleptic, we can get its shape, size, color, fractures, order, and taste. In organoleptic, you can go towards the bark stem underground structures leaves flower fruit seeds for the microscopic evaluation we already studying the anatomy of these various parts it means you students of the botany 
already studied these all studies but you don't know these studies are applicable in pharmacognosy so that's my view to upgrade your knowledge basic knowledge to applied branch means all the botanical studies you pull to the pharmacy study that is the pharmacognosy study and whenever you going to pull your basic study to advanced study you may go different this is an ideal whenever you are going to study the histochemistry you can identify the different chemicals or chemical compounds which are located in different plant parts and with the help of histochemistry or with the help of different reagent a section with treating with different reagent you can identify the starch grain aluron grains fat fatty oil volatile oil, oil uh, resins calcium oxalate carbonate crystals lignified cell uh, cellulose wall and so many different useful chemicals you can localize their location in the plant cell and in this way you can identify the different chemical compounds located in the part of the cell in this way you can also identify the different leaf constants that is the palisadal ratio palisadal ratio how palisadal ratio is calculated p means number of palisadal tissues you can uh, identify or you can count this palisadal tissue beneath with the epidermal tissue and this gives palisadal ratio when islet number whatever islets are found in a one centimeter one millimeter square meter this is the when islet number when termination number every islet having particular terminations and one millimeter how much terminations found in the one millimeter you get the when termination number stomatal number in one uh, millimeter uh, what amount of these stomatas are found it is known as the stomatal index lycopodium spore method these are the microscopic study by which you can found the different constants also with the help of dermal study you can identify the di different trichomes it may be glandular or non-glandular stomata different types of the stomatas palisadal ratio how palisadal ratio are identified these are the epidermal cells and these are the palisadal cells just count the number and calculate you may get you may got the palisadal ratio maturation you already done the maturations anatomy you both students already done every anatomical structure root stem node leaf and petiole just identify why these identification is uh, why this uh, anatomical structure is useful whenever you are working as a quality standard or quality control quality controller then when uh, adulsa leaf is admixed or adulterated with the different types of the leaves or the brahmi leaves adulterated with the other leaf then you can identify it with the help of this anatomical structure whatever the amount of the different adulterants are there chemical evaluation every plant having different chemicals like the alkaloids glycosides carbohydrates and uh, fatty lipids every plant for this you may having the uh, proper extraction isolation and with the help of uh, isolation traps or extraction strips they may useful for size reduction extraction filtration concentration and drying of the uh, there are the so many uh, tests which are used with the help of modern instruments that is the uh, like the tlc thin layer chromatography high performance thin layer chromatography hplc and glc and these are the instruments you can use for modern techniques this is the TLC fingerprint profile for uh, methanolic extract of some of the plants. This is the HPTLC fingerprint. Uh, due to time, I am not going to details about the 
chemical quantitative and qualitative chemical extraction i am just overlooking these are the techniques which are involved in pharmacognostic study biological evaluation in biological evaluation bioassay is an uh, very important in which you can identify the antimicrobial test antifungal test antioxidant test then in physical evaluation you may uh, identified or you may standard with the different parameters like the visco viscosity melting point solubility specific gravity density optical rotation refractive index and so on these are the separate every having the separate uh, preparations if you are preparing the ash you may go through acid soluble ash acid insoluble ash this having the different water soluble ash then soluble extraction different types of the ex extraction method uh, cold cold method hot method and succinate cold method in the co uh, cold method there are different solvent you may use insoluble matter then so, uh, water content then hot extraction it, it is the simple hot extraction method in this method the simple hot extraction is carried out and hot continuous extraction is the succinate extraction succinate extraction is also hot extraction but hot extraction is different from succinate extraction then there is an infusion different types of the infusion you may prepare decoction then swelling index then water and volatile oil then foreign organic matter every compound every drug having some of the uh, soil particles stone particles sand particle dust particle and these uh, foreign particles are known as organic and every drug having standard organic matter in this way you can evaluate the drug with the help of five parameter that is the organoleptic another one is a botanical third one is a physical fourth is in chemical and fifth one is in biological and in this way in the evaluation of herbal drug you can identify organoleptic color order taste texture fracture in botanical macroscopic microscopic in physical moisture extractive ash value fluorescent analysis and in chemical qualitative quantitative and different and in biological you may go through for uh, bacteria anti uh, antifungal antibacterial and uh, different microbial test or toxic toxicological test and uh, in this way for the proper identification proper authentication i have a book which is known as medicinal herbs for pharma industry this book gives 177 plants which uh, plants are included by the indian medicinal plant association for drug preparations they are given a list of plant in uh, that plants are correctly identified and described as a botanical point of view and giving some its phytochemistry this is an a book having information given in marathi but scientific name uh, chemical components are given in scientific language that is the in english and this plant included about the 384 plant species which are found in maharashtra so the name of this book is an maharashtra til aushadi vanaspati sangrah this is the one of the another my compilation is the spices and condiments which gives the medicinal properties of the spices and condiments and recently i have published a, a recent trends in biological sciences and in this way i uh, due to time limit there are two more lectures also there so i would like to stop my presentation and if students have any query you may ask within two minutes okay sir thank, thank you, you sir very wonderful uh, uh, talk on the pharmacognosy of medicinal plants uh, students if you are having any queries
if you want to ask something you can ask Sir has explained each and every term very thoroughly in simple language. Still, if you are having any queries, because uh, I think second year students are working on phytochemistry and pharmacology for their PhD, uh, MSc dissertations, so they can ask them. Okay. Okay, sir. No problem. Vedika, you want to ask something? Okay. So I think the students have. Vedika no has question. raised the hand. Uh, I think she ha she having the problem of unmute. Sir, look at look at Vedika Varankar. Okay, yes. It may be. I think she is unable to unmute herself. Okay, sir. No problem. Continue, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, I think there is some technical issues. Okay, no problem, sir. Uh, I am very sir, thankful to uh, Dr. Uh, Principal Kulat, sir. And convener of the organizing uh, this lecture series, Deepak Koche sir, and organizing committee uh, to invite me to a uh, giving lecture. I'm thankful to everyone for your patience. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, sir, for your uh, wonderful delivery of lecture and uh, for sparing us, uh, for sparing the time for us. Thank you very much, sir. Um, now uh, we are uh, proceeding further. Uh, the second lecture uh, uh, is uh, going to be delivered by the another per personality, that is Dr. M. K. Desetti Varsa. Uh, he has joined uh, the join us uh, join with us online. Okay, sir. I am here, sir. Deceptive, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Yes, you are audible now. Uh, now I am uh, introducing uh, the. Uh... Good afternoon, sir. Good, Good afternoon, Deceptive, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. So, our second guest lecturer is the assistant professor, Department of Botany, MJ College, Jargao. Affiliated with the Kavitri Bainabai Chaudhary North Maharashtra University, Jalgao. He has teaching experience, teaching and research experience of around 12 years. Before joining this institute, uh, he has also uh, having some industrial ex experience, uh, especially uh, in plant tissue culture and genetic manipulation. Uh, he has completed one UGC project and uh, have more than 30 uh, publications in various reported journals. Uh, sir, I welcome you. Okay, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are audible, sir. You can share your uh, presentation now. Okay, sir.
is it visible okay presentation is visible sir okay good okay um, so good afternoon students and uh, organizing committee and deepak coach sir so today's my uh, topic is agile transfer techniques uh, my college is now a autonomous status okay it is affiliated to tavitri bhaina bhai chaudhary okay so uh, jain transfer techniques so uh, student have you identified this plant anybody okay actually this is a transgenic plant the gene of luciferin which was transferred into this plant and uh, this plant is growing ओके काजवा महती है ना सग सग काजवा महती है काजव्या मधल जीन ये ट्रांसफर के लिए तो लुसिफेरिन जीन है ओके सो दिस इज द टेक्निक्स विच वॉज बायोजीलाइन बाय बायोटेक्नोलॉजिकल टेक्निक्स जीन वॉज ट्रांसफर्ड इन टू दिस प्लांट ओके सो नेक्स्ट इज द मेथड ऑफ जीन ट्रांसफर देर आर वेरियस मेथड्स ऑफ जीन ट्रांसफर Uh, that is direct method of gene uh, transfer agrobacterium mediated gene transformation and in that agrobacterium uh, mediated gene, uh, gene transformation techniques uh, we are going to see the structure of ki plasmid use of ki plasmid in genetic uh, transformation i will explain you the what is mean by ti plasmid that is tumor inducing plasmid okay use of ti plasmid in genetic transformation and the steps involved in agrobacterium mediated genetic transformation of plant by own expert me wounded expert me sir if time permit i will uh, also explain you the direct uh, methods of gene transfer in direct methods of gene uh, transfer micro projectors that is particle bombardment electroporation micro injection uh, chemical mediated gene transfer uh, transfer that is uh, polythene glycol and another chemicals are used for the transfer of gene uh, another one is liposome mediated gene transfer and silicon carbide methods okay so particle bomber basically this particle bombardment is consisting of one uh, instrument i will show in um, last slide, uh, slide what is meant by particle bombardment and how can this operate etc okay so Uh, we we will see uh, the biology of uh, agrobacterium tumefaciens so agro everybody knows that agrobacterium tumefaciens is a soil bacterium responsible for crown gall uh, crown gall disease of infected plants okay so what happens when uh, plants uh, get infected by um, active mechanical activity or physical activity by uh, animals or winds so plant at the site of uh, soil plant get infected okay so plant uh, get wounded sorry plant get wounded and at that uh, place the agrobacterium tumefaciens recognize the signal this uh, dicotyledon are the plants uh, produce uh, phenol containing uh, chemicals uh, for example that is uh, acetosurinium this agrobacterium uh, tumefaciens uh, recognize this uh, signal and it attract to towards that plant okay and it infect there and it reproduce inside the uh, plant body just like a cancer okay so there is a formation of crown gall disease like this okay these are the just a bit i will take a pointer okay so this is the crown gall disease caused by agrobacterium tumefaciens there is another one agrobacterium that is rhizogenus right agro uh, species of agrobacterium another species of agrobacterium is so that is rhizogenus which is um, in fact the uh, hairy root formation especially in monocotyledons and agrobacterium tumefaciens infects the dicotyledons plant okay so this this is uh, crown gall formation in uh, agrobacterium tumefaciens okay 
So this is also the one of the uh, best example. What is the crown gall infection? We have seen this. Okay. Next, what are the abilities of kidney patients? How it can induce crown gall in plant? And how it is utilized in the genetic transplantation. Okay. So, this um, agrobacterium tumi patients is naturally known as a, it is a natural genetic engineer. Okay. Because of this, we are able to transform gene into the plant. Okay. So, agrobacterium tumor patients controlled by genetic information carried out TI plasma, that is tumor inducing plasma. It has two components okay, tDNA, that is transfer DNA, and wear region. Wear region, which is essential for the transformation of plant cell. Okay. What happened during transformation? tDNA is excised from the TI plasma. Suppose, suppose, this is let me draw suppose this is the plasma suppose and this one is the this region is the ti plasma that is ti plasma and where region is here okay so what is the role of where region is that this where region is responsible for the copying of this tdna portion Okay, this TDNA portion it copies and transferred to the plant cell. Okay, so what happens during this process? TDNA is excised from the TDNA, uh, TI plasma and transferred into the cell, and in and this TDNA is integrated into the DNA of the host cell or plant cell. So the integration of the DNA occurs random chromosomal side. In some cases, multiple TDNA integration events occur in the same cell. Okay, so if you want to produce a transgenic plant, okay, their copy number must be a single copy number. Okay, multiple copy number. If, if there is a multiple copy number of the TDNA, then in that case, the production of particular protein is multiplies with the copy number. If there is three, then it, uh, protein will be produced at three times, four times, five times, etc. So, in this case, if you want to transfer this DNA in a particular plant, it must be a single copy. We have heard about BT water in that uh, Monsanto has uh, taken a lot of efforts about 20 years and 95 scientists were work on that to achieve that single event of transgenic water because of because of this multiplication or multiple tdna integration factors so they have after 20 years they have achieved the single copy of that bacillus thuringiensis in poker 312 in that plant and that plant was used for again the plant building purposes in different varieties okay so suppose what happens if the uh, copy numbers are multiplied in case of uh, bacillus thuringiensis it is the toxic to the helicoparva or uh, helicoparva armigera which is eukaryotic in nature if suppose this copy number is more than two or three the so production of that crystallizable protein is also doubled or tripled or four times okay so if it is toxic to the helicoparmigera, it is also toxic to the animal. So that's why copy number should be single. Okay. So that's why this Monsanto has taken 20 years and 95 uh, scientists have worked on this um, transgenic water. There are a lot of um, crops uh, like um, golden rice. Uh, Brinjal is also there, okay, uh, in which the uh, this uh, desired gene is transferred. Okay, so uh, this is a simple. Uh, this is the photograph showing the uh, infection of agrobacteria. Okay, so these are the soil-borne agrobacteria, as you see here. So this is the. 
in major form. So this is agrobacteria. This is the cell wall of plant, the plant cytoplasm, and this is DNA. Okay. When the uh, agrobacterium get attracted uh, towards the plant cell, uh, the chem uh, plant cells uh, synthesize the acetosyrogen uh, or chemical that is phenol containing chemicals. So agrobacteria get attracted towards the cell of plant cell, and here. They can transfer this portion. This portion is known as tDNA portion, okay, which was transferred into the um, plant nucleus and which was integrated into the plant nucleus. Okay. So tDNA, there are where uh, region also, where D2, where D5, where E, where G. There are uh, more than 25 uh, genes are responsible for this transfer of. Um, tDNA portion into the nucleus. Okay. Uh, here, in protein alpha, we have uh, VF1, VF2, histone proteins, it has shown here, chromatin fibers are and actin cytopelatins are given. Okay. So, in this way, the agrobacteria can transfer uh, tDNA portion into the plant cell okay this is uh, another one uh, method so agrobacterium tumefaciens is the soil bacteria it has ti plasmid that is tdna ti plasmid and it contains the tdna this is the chromosome of the, uh, that bacteria okay when it infect when it infect to the plant cell this is chromosomal dna and this one is the transfer transform plant cells See, this portion is transferred into the TDA, uh, plant cell. This is tDNA. Okay. Now, it can produce the crop. So, this property, okay. So, transferring of tDNA property, which is present in the agrobacteria, which can be used for the transformation of plant. Uh, except in, uh, for, the transfer, uh, for the transformation of desired gene into the particular plant, we have to remove this tDNA portion of the plant. Okay. So now, this uh, TI plasmid, tDNA, uh, insertion into the chromosome, this is the uh, portion is the uh, magnified portion of the agrobacterium fumigation gene and uh, integrated uh, into the insertion and integrated into the chromosome. So, uh, structure of the, uh, tDNA plasmid, TI plasmid is, uh, in tDNA, nopalin type, or octopine type. Okay, two types of uh, TI uh, plasmid are there octopine or nucleotide. No TI plasmid, the DNA is near uh, near about uh, 23,000 nucleotide ba uh, base pair segment. It carries uh, 13 known genes, included gene encoding enzyme that catalyze the synthesis of phytoalgin, that is, auxins and cytokinin, that is, indolacetic acid and isopentyl adenosine. These phytohormones, which are um, present in that uh, TI, uh, tDNA plasmid, which are responsible for the production of a tumorous growth of the cell, that is uh, leading to the formation of crown. The tDNA region uh, has um, two borders, that is left border and right border, and each border contains 25 nucleotide base pair. Okay, that is imperfect repeats. <clears throat> One of these must be present in cis for DNA, uh, tDNA, excision and transfer. Okay. So next is now virulence region. The structure of TI plasmid that is virulence region. It contains the genes required for the tDNA transport process. These genes encode the TNA proce uh, DNA processing enzyme required for excision, transport, integration of the tDNA cell. Mm -hmm. This uh, weird region also contains uh, uh, signal rec uh, recognition uh, program. Signal rec uh, rec uh, recognize the gene, which recognizes the signal which was produced by the host plant. Okay, that is in the form of uh, phenolic compound, or it may be acetosyrogen. If you want to transfer uh, in a laboratory condition, you have to incorporate in that uh, medium. This uh, acetosyrungin, acetosyrungin chemicals, so that this
हेलो हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर ओके देर वॉज अ टेक्निकल इश्यू ओके ओके इट हैपन समाइम प्रेजेंटेशन दिस्त हेलो हेलो ओके ओके सो वी आर रीजन so where region contains gene required for the transfer of this process this genes encoded the tna uh, dna processing enzymes required for the excision transfer integration of the tdna segment and one more gene is there that is the uh, recognition gene uh, which can recognize the uh, phenolic compound which was produced by the plant okay they expressed at very low level function uh, growing in a soil exposure of the bacteria to wounded plant cell or exudates from the plant cell induce enhanced level of expression of the vir region this induction process is very slow for bacteria taking near about 10 to 15 hours to reach maximum level of exp expression phenol compound which i was uh, already uh, already uh, told you that the acetosurinder act as the inducer of the vir, uh, vir region okay so this is the structure of nucleolin ti plasmid that's pti c58 here you can see the origin of replication this one this one is the origin of replication origin of replication where region tdna okay uh, this is a nos and nox genes okay and <clears throat> so this is the left terminal uh, repeats and a right terminal uh, repeats so uh, origin of uh, replication responsible for the tumor formation nox genes involved in the nucleolin biosynthesis nox genes involved in the catabolism of nucleolin where region genes required for tdna transport the nucleotide pair sequence of the left and right terminal repeat are shown at the top <coughs> the hastrick match uh, four base pairs that differ into two borders this four um, nucleotide sequence are different from the one another okay so this is the uh, ti plasmid okay so here we can see for the magnified version of the tdna plasmid this is the origin of replication this one is virulence region this one uh, left uh, left border right border and this one is the t region which contains oncogenes cytokinin producing opioid synthesis and oxygen producing gene and conservative uh, transfer gene and this one is the opioid uh, catabolism gene okay again uh, same So what happens if the uh, bacteria can infect the plant cell? So this is bacteria. This is isol DNA extraction and isolation, cloning of design, uh, cloning of and designing of genes, and then transformation. And uh, this is cell and tissue culture techniques. After that, when this uh, gene is transferred into the plant. the plant breeding and production of large number of the plants okay so dna extraction 
isolation of a desired gene from bacteria or it may be from plant which, uh, which would want, uh, want to transfer into the plant cell. So the segment of the segment of gene is cloned into the uh, agrobacterium plasmid or E. coli plasmid and um, this uh, agrobacterium culture is used for the co uh, transformation technique that is co-cultivation techniques okay and after that uh, this uh, cells are transferred into the tissue culture medium containing the tissue culture medium containing the plant hormones which uh, produce the uh, somatic embryo and somatic embryo mature into the plants and these plants are further used for the bre uh, breeding purposes so now see now uh, this is the agrobacterium primifacients this is T, uh, tdna this one is the tdna which is responsible for the crown gall disease formation before <coughs> using this tdna for the transformation uh, techniques we can use we, we can uh, first remove this uh, tdna section that is it is known as disarming of the plasma, uh, agrobacterium plasma. In, in place of that, we have to transfer the gene for desired traits. Gene for de uh, desired traits, uh, that is um, bacillus uh, thuringiensis gene, uh, that was BT gene, which was incorporated at the site of uh, TDN. Okay. Left border and the right border are kept intact. Okay, in between that, you have to insert this design okay, into plasmid uh, using this uh, restriction in uh, enzymes and DNA. Values. Now, uh, this uh, TI plasmid is now it is known as the recombinant TI plasmid. Then, this uh, TI plasmid is uh, transferred into the competent cells. Okay. So competent cells and these competent cells are grown in a, a culture medium and that culture is used for the infection of a particular plant. Yeah, say example, cotton, rice or brinja. After infecting this plant, this, uh, this tDNA portion, which is now it is uh, carrying a desired gene or it is known as recombinant uh, tDNA, which transfers this gene into the plant cell plant can be regenerate, uh, regenerated and new uh, plant will form. Regeneration of plant occurs by somatic embryogenesis or you can do by multiple uh, shoot induction. Okay. So you will get this uh, new plant. This is the simple mechanism, mechanism of tDNA transformation. I will also show you the um, video which is uh, in which the whole, whole process is carried out. Now, uh, TI plasmid uh, for creating a transgenic plant. Or uh, foreign gene uh, could be inserted into the TDNA, then transferred into the plant. In, in the modified TDNA plasmids, genes responsible for tumor formation are deleted. Just as I said, that the TI plasmid is the opine, oxygen, and kinetin synthesis. Oxygen and cytokinin synthesis that gene I have, which are responsible for the production of tumors. The tail genes which can remove killer data. And it that he can that he can apply the gene to insert killer data. Insert killer data when you apply the identify karaisa ki konta gene to the transfer karaisa. The sir, to mala sign it later, ki bacillus thuringiensis gene. So, Bacillus person isolate kela dato. Adi to jo gene ahe, ta jo remove kele la TI plasmid sa section ahe, ta ite clone kela dato. Ata cloning hi method ji ahe, tike sopi nahi hai. Okay. Tar pailanda tumala cloning karta na. Pailanda agrobacterium sa plasmid isolate kara jaye. And the chhannantar tumsa desired gene asle la do konta hi organism hai. Kya madna? That's a DNA isolate for us. Animal get shot a shot tube muddy. Just she just a tube ahead. That's a muddy 
जास्तीत जास्त हंड्रेड मायक्रोलिटर ओके हंड्रेड मायक्रोलिटर म्हणजे काय पॉइंट वन एम एल एवढीच छोटीशी रिॲक्शन असते आणि त्याच्यामध्ये हजारो प्लाझमेट्स असतात आणि त्या पर्टिक्युलर जो डिझायर्ड जीन आहे तो असलेला जो जिनोम आहे तिथे टाकलं जातं आणि एकच रेस्ट्रिक्शन एन्झाईम दोन्ही याला कट करण्यासाठी वापरलं जातं जसं इको आर वन वगैरे आहे तुम्हाला हिंड थ्री वगैरे आहे हे रेस्ट्रिक्शन एन्झाईम तुम्हाला माहिती आहे तर त्या क्लोनिंग प्रोसेसमध्ये मग आता हे क्लोनिंग प्रोसेस करताना आपल्याला पाहिजे तो झिन त्याच्यामध्ये इन्सर्ट झालंय की नाही झालं मग हे कसं चेक करायचं मग त्याच्यासाठी काही मार्कर्स वापरल्या जातात सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स असे म्हणतात नॉन सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स आणि ते सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स वरनं कळतं की याच्यामध्ये पाहिजे तो जीन इन्सर्ट झालेला आहे असे जे जीन इन्सर्ट झालेले प्लाझमिट्स आहेत ते सेपरेट करायचे आणि बाकीचे डिस्कार्ड करायचे ओके आता याच्यामध्ये सांगितलं आहे के एन आर म्हणजे कॅनामायसिन रेझिस्टन्स जी ते इकोलाय मध्ये ओके टी एन फायव्ह हा यूज केला जातो एक्सटेन्सिव्हली म्हणजे जास्त प्रमाणात हाच सिलेक्टेबल मार्क म्हणून यूज केला जातो ओके आता याच्यामध्ये जो जीन आहे नियोवायसिन फॉस्को ट्रान्सफरेस्ट टाईप टू जीन ओके मग आता हा काय करतो की याच्यामध्ये एक प्रॉपर्टी आहे की जो प्रोटीन प्रोड्यूस करेल तो कॅनामायसिनला डिटॉक्सिफाय करेल मग हा कॅनामायसिनचा जीन आणि डिझायर्ड जीन दोन्ही एकत्र जर ट्रान्सफर झाले तर काय होईल की कॅनामायसिनचा इफेक्ट त्या प्लांटवरती होणार नाही किंवा त्या बॅक्टेरियावरती होणार नाही ओके आता याच्यामध्ये बघा एन पी टी टू कोडिंग सिक्वेन्सेस आहे जो प्रमोटर त्याला ऑलरेडी दिलेला आहे आणि प्लांट ट्रान्सफॉर्मेशन आणि पॉली आयडेंटिफिकेशन सिग्नल सुद्धा त्याला दिलेलं आहे ओके आता हे कन्स्ट्रक्शन जे आहे सच कन्स्ट्रक्शन विथ प्रोकॅरिटिक इनकोडिंग सिक्वेन्स प्लांट बाय युकॅरिटिक रेग्युलेटरी सिक्वेन्स आर कॉल्ड ॲट कायमेरिक सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स म्हणजे प्रोकॅरिएटमध्ये पण झाला पाहिजे आणि तो यु कॅरिएटमध्ये पण ते सिक्वेन्सेस जे आहेत ते रेग्युलेट झाले पाहिजे आता बॅक्टेरियामध्ये जेव्हा आपण जेन क्लोन करतोय बॅक्टेरिया प्रोकॅरिएट आहे आणि जे ज्याला इन्फेक्शन करतोय तो यु कॅरिएट आहे तर त्याच्यामुळे दोन्ही याच्यामध्ये जो सिक्वेन्स आहे तो काय झाला पाहिजे की फ्रँक झाला पाहिजे किंवा दोन्ही याच्यामध्ये तो मल्टिप्लिकेशन त्याचं झालं पाहिजे तरच तो चांगला एक वेटक मानला जातो ओके आता याच्यामध्ये बघा याच्यामध्ये जो कायमेरिक सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर जीन जो असतो त्याच्यामध्ये का पॉलिफा फ्लॉवर मोझाईक वायरस थर्टी फाय एस प्रमोटर आणि एन पी टी टू कोडिंग सिक्वेन्स टी आय प्लाझमिलचा नोकोलाईन सिंथेसिस जीन टर्मिनेशन सिक्वेन्स आणि हे सगळं वापरल्या जातात आणि त्याला थर्टी फाय एस एन पी टी टू नॉस असं नाव दिलं ओके द टी आय वेक्टर ज्यूज द ट्रान्सफर जीन इन टू ट्युमर इंड्युसिंग जीन ऑफ द प्लाझमिट्स रिप्लेस विथ द कायमेरिक सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर जीन सच ॲज थर्टी फाय एस एन पी टू टू नॉस आता जो ट्युमर इंड्युसिंग जीन होता त्याला रिप्लेस करून कायमेरिक जो जीन आहे म्हणजे त्याच्यामध्ये सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर आणि आपलं जीन जो डिझायर्ड जीन आहे आम्ही जेव्हा लेबॉरेटरीमध्ये काम करायचो त्यावेळेस कॅनामायसिन रेजिस्टन्स जीन होता आणि त्याच्यासोबत बॅसिलस तुरिंजिनिसिसचा जीन होता तर तो जीन ट्रान्सफर झाला की नाही तर हे ओळखण्यासाठी सिम्पली कॅनामायसिन हंड्रेड एम जी पर लिटर असलेलं कॅनामायसिन टाकलेलं जो मीडिया असायचा तर त्यावरती प्लांट ट्रान्सफर करायचे जे प्लांट जिवंत आहेत समजायचं की याच्यामध्ये जीन आहेत आणि जे प्लांट डेड झाले त्यांच्यामध्ये हा जीन नाही ओके आता बघा ही एक सोपी मेथड परत एकदा तुम्हाला मी सांगतो आता हा जो आहे टार्गेट जीन आहे हा टी आय प्लाझमिड आहे आता टी आय प्लाझमिडमध्ये हा टार्गेट जीन जो आहे तो इथे इन्टॅक्ट म्हणजे क्रोन केला ओके मग आता टी डी एन ए जो आहे हा कशासोबत टार्गेट जीन सोबत इंटिग्रेट झालेला आहे आता हा बघा हा जो सेल आहे हा प्लाझमिट या ॲग्रोबॅक्टेरियनमध्ये इन्सर्ट केलेला आहे आणि हा ॲग्रोबॅक्टेरियनचा जीन आहे आता हा जो आहे हा नॉर्मल प्लांट आहे ओके नॉर्मल प्लांटचे जे डिस्क आहेत म्हणजे टिश्यू कल्चर जर आपल्याला करायचे आहे तर तुम्ही कोणत्याही प्लांटचा पार्ट वापरू शकता इट इज नोन ॲज एक्सपोर्ट फॉर एक्झाम्पल इथे त्यांनी डिस्क घेतलेले आहे प्लांटचे आणि बघा आता इथे जे ग्रीन दाखवलेले आहेत ते आहेत नॉन 
transfer cell, transform cell, and uh, sorry, um, green de, uh, de, uh, they are here, they are here, plant cell, and he is lucky to this for the agrobacterium. Okay, Atta, he is a culture, Kilaza, the element of co cultivation method. Co cultivation manjaga, plant cell, and it is the agrobacterium to mutations, he is a cultivation, Kilaza, and it is a mantra. Next step, the next step, the co cultivate cells are cells. culture selection medium. The selection medium is the step. The agrobacterium is growth. The medium is the same. The cyprotaxin is the marker. Marker uh, antibiotic no aparta, dusra antibiotic aparta, that is known as a cipotaxim sarka medium one of the other. Tananter he says the cipotaxim medium worth a transfer killer. Manje to check the overgrowth of the tumefacients. Okay, agrobacterium tumefacients. Agrobacterium tumefacients overgrowth ekdaka thumbly, but they sales jahe. They sales selection medium worth a transfer killer. Selection medium worthy, canamycin 100 mg per liter canamycin water, and he sells selection medium worthy transport killer hunter. Jeb he sells Jivan Tahe. Third Sunlaiser, Kitashamade, Aplajo, desired genahe, to Alevahe, and Ibakije dead Zale, Tesapade, desired gene, when the agrobacterium infection properly Zalelene, Kiwa to gene Tamade insert Zalela. Okay, and it is an anther. Uh, selection medium number J cells given to the cells la shoot induction medium mana how the kiva somatic embryo formation medium I have to the transport the rice somatic embryo formation within the general shoot formation with root formation with any complete transform plant of the male and hard transform plant which is Japanese in the actually like a transform plant of the food service is there when Survatica condition lab, yeah, transform, uh, transform the plant is a head. Tanatumala hardening the Ravala, the Poyanda. Hardening Kelan Hunter, hardening the Lur, Techanantama glass house mode, and Nantur field mode transport Kelar Rapper, and it is whom Jekai says multi, Jekai assay, the says meal and Nantur Kala multiply Kara, and he mug him multiply Kelele seeds, a breeding satu. Okay. He एक सिंपल फ्लो चार्ट आहे जसं इथे जसं दाखवलं आहे सेम हा फ्लो चार्ट आहे इथे बघा को इंटीग्रेटेड टीआय प्लाज्मिड दिसतोय तुम्हाला हे प्लांट सेल दिसतोय ट्रान्सफॉर्म सेल दिसतोय कॅनामायसिन से दिसतोय आणि कल्चर सेल दिसतात आणि हे प्लांट हा झाला ट्रान्सजेनिक प्लांट आता हा ट्रान्सजे ही हा जो डीएनए आहे बघा हा फॉरेन डीएनए आणि हा कॅनामायसिन रेजिस्टेंस जी हा लेफ्ट बॉर्डर आणि राईट बॉर्डर इथे असेल जो एग्रोबॅक्टेरियम मध्ये आपण वापर ओके ही सुद्धा एक सिंपल मेकॅनिझम आहे ट्रान्सफॉर्म कसे कसे केले जाते मग आता याचे काही थोडेफार लिमिटेशन्स पण आहे टीआय प्लाज्मिडचे या टीआय प्लाज्मिडचे लिमिटेशन्स म्हणजे हा साइज असा मोठा आहे ओके ओपाइन सिंथेसिस जो आहे हे प्लांट साठी काहीच यूजफुल नाही आहे आणि त्याच्यामुळे काय होतं की प्लांट मध्ये जो इल्ड आहे तो कमी होतो आता ट्रान्सपोर्ट जी डीएनए जो आहे इट इज स्टार्ट विथ द राईट बॉर्डर आता राईट बॉर्डर जे आहे डज नॉट ऑलवेज एंड विथ एट द लेफ्ट बॉर्डर तो फर्दर पुढे पण जाऊ शकतो ओके आता याच्यामध्ये टीआय ब्लेस याचे काय काय कंपोनेंट्स आहेत ते तुम्हाला मी सांगितले आता बघा सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स इन दिस नियोमायसिन फास्फोरस ट्रान्सफरेज आता प्लांटच्या कंट्रोल मध्ये तुम्ही ठेवता ट्रान्सक्रिप्शन रेगुलेटरी सिग्नल्स इंड्यूस बोथ प्रोमोटर एंड टर्मिनेशन पॉली एडेनेशन सीक्वेंस एन ओरिजिन ऑफ डीएनए रेप्लिकेशन दैट अलाउ द प्लाज्मा टू रेप्लिकेट इक्वल है द राइट बॉर्डर सीक्वेंस ऑफ द टीडीएनए रीजन मोस्ट क्लोनिंग वेक्टर्स इंक्लूड बोथ राइट एंड लेफ्ट बॉर्डर सीक्वेंस दोन्ही मध्ये वापरले जातात ओके हे थोडेफार लिमिटेशन्स आहेत ओके आता इथे बायनरी वेक्टर काय आहे को इंटीग्रेटेड वेक्टर काय आहे हे सगळं दिलेलं आहे 
आता बायनरी वेक्टर मध्ये बघा याच्यामध्ये ई कोलाय किंवा हायड्रो बॅटरी तुम्ही पेशियंटचा ओरिजिन असतो ओके इथे बघण्यापेक्षा इथे बघा आता हा बायनरी वेक्टर आहे बघा याच या बायनरी वेक्टरमध्ये दोन ओरिजिन आहेत ई कोलायचे ओरिजिन आहे आणि तुम्ही पेशियंटचा ओरिजिन आहे आता हा इथे बघा सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स जीन्स फॉर बोर्ड ई कोलाय आणि तुम्ही पेशियंट राईट बॉर्डर लेफ्ट बॉर्डर टार्गेट जीन आणि सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स ओके सो इन दिस केस टू सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर्स आहोत आहे वन इज फॉर बोथ जीन्स ई कोलाय अँड ट्युमी पेशियंट अनदर वन इज सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर विच इज ट्रान्सफर इन टू द होस्ट सेल होस्ट सेल म्हणजे जेव्हा आपला डिझायर जीन आपल्याला ट्रान्सफर करायचं आहे तर त्याच्यासोबत टार्गेट म्हणजे सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर सुद्धा त्या प्लांटमध्ये गेला पाहिजे आता हा ओरिजिन जे आहे हा इकोलायचा ओरिजिन आहे आणि हा अॅग्रो बॅटरी ट्युमी फेशियलचा ओरिजिन आहे दोन ओरिजिन वापरले आहेत कारण काय की इकोलायचा जो ओरिजिन आहे आता याला बायनरी वेक्टर म्हटलंय की आपल्याला दोन्ही केसमध्ये म्हणजे प्रोकॅरिटमध्ये पण एक्सप्रेस झाला पाहिजे आणि हा यु कॅरिटमध्ये पण एक्सप्रेस झाला आता बघा ट्युमी फेशियलचा जो आहे तर तो यु कॅरिटमध्ये होईल आणि हा प्रोकॅरिटमध्ये आता इथे एक गोष्ट दाखवलेली नाही दॅट इज वेर रिजन इथे वेर रिजन पण वापरलं जातं कारण काय वेर रिजन मोडेच हा जो लेफ्ट बॉर्डर पासून तर राईट बॉर्डरचा जो सिक्वेन्स आहे हा प्लांटमध्ये ट्रान्सफर केल्या जातात त्याच्यामध्ये जवळपास आठ जीन आहे एक जीन सिग्नल रिकग्नाइज करतो दॅट इज फिनोलिक कंपाउंड सिक्युएशन जेव्हा प्लांटमध्ये होतं त्याला रिकग्निशन करतो एक एका जीनचं काम आहे की या पोर्शनमध्ये निक करणे तिथे निक करणे दुसऱ्या जीनचं काम काय की याची कॉपी तयार करणे ओके आता याची कॉपी तयार करणे म्हणजे कशी कॉपी तयार करणे हा प्लाझ्मिड इंटॅक्ट राहील आणि इथून इथपर्यंत याची अशी कॉपी तयार होईल इथपर्यंत ओके हा सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर आपल्याला जिथे ट्रान्सफर करायचा ज्या होस्ट सेलमध्ये ट्रान्सफर करायचा हा सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर तिथे जाईल आणि हे सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर जे आहे हे ते प्लाझ्मिड त्याच्यात आहे की नाही याच्यासाठी जेव्हा आपण ग्रो करू तर त्याच्यासाठी आहे ओके ह्या हा जो पोर्शन आहे लेफ्ट बॉर्डर टू राईट बॉर्डर हा प्लांटमध्ये एक्सप्रेस होईल हा सेलमध्येच राहील सेलमध्ये एक्सप्रेस होईल तर लेफ्ट बॉर्डर पासून वेर रिझनचं काम काय आहे की हा लेफ्ट बॉर्डर पासून तर राईट बॉर्डर बॉर्डर पर्यंतचा सिक्वेन्स जो आहे तो कॉपी करणे अशी वरती कॉपी करणे आणि हा प्लाझ्मिड ऍज इट इज इंटॅक्ट राहील आणि हा आता एका जीनचं काम काय आहे की ह्याने एक जीन इथे निक केलं सेम होस्ट सेलला सुद्धा निक करेल आणि हा सिंगल कॉपी जो आहे टार्गेट जीन किंवा सेल डिझायर्ड जीनचा जो पोर्शन आहे हा प्लांटमध्ये ट्रान्सफर केला जाईल आता प्लांटमध्ये तुम्हाला माहिती आहे की प्रोप्रिडिंग आहे ओके प्रोप्रि आता हा जो आहे सिंगल स्टँडर्ड टार्गेट जीन हा ट्रान्सफर होईल प्लांटमध्ये आणि प्लांट प्रोप्रिडिंगच्या वेळेस उरलेले बेस्टवेअर हे टाकून देईल आणि त्याच्यामुळे तो जीवन कम्प्लीट होईल आणि हा त्या होस्टमध्ये इंटिग्रेट होईल या पद्धतीने आता होतं काय एक्झॅक्टली होतं काय की हा पोर्शन समजा प्लांटमध्ये इंटिग्रेट झाला इंटिग्रेट झाला तर याचं प्रॉडक्शन सुरू होईल प्रॉडक्शन आता डिझायर जो जीन आहे समजा बॅसिलस बेटी प्रोटीन असेल म्हणजे क्रिस्टलायझेबल प्रोटीन असेल तो प्रोडक्शन तिथे सुरू होईल तर प्रोडक्शन सुरू होईल आणि ते प्रोडक्शन झाल्यानंतर मग हेलिको वरचा आर्मी जेराचा जरी अटॅक झाला तरी तो त्याच्यापासून सर्वाईव्ह होईल ही झाली आपल्या डिझायर्ड जीनची आणि एक्झॅक्टली सपोज इथे ऑक्टोपाईन किंवा नोपेलाईन किंवा तुमचा ऑक्झिन आणि सायटोपानिनचा जीन असेल हा पोर्शन जर प्लांटमध्ये जर गेला तर काय होईल की तिथे सायटोपायनिन आणि ऑक्झिन सिंथेसिस होईल आणि सेलची ग्रोथ अनकंट्रोल्ड होईल म्हणून क्राऊन गाल फॉर्मेशन होईल तर क्राऊन गाल फॉर्मेशनची जी प्रॉपर्टी आहे ती प्रॉपर्टी रिमूव्ह करायची आहे आपल्याला आणि त्या ठिकाणी आपल्याला टार्गेट जीन टाकायचं आहे ओके तो म्हणजे तो जो पोर्शन होता तो काढून टार्गेट जीन टाकायचा आणि हा यूज करायचा आता हे को इंटिग्रेटेड वेक्टर सिस्टीम काय आहे मी तुम्हाला आत्ता थोड्या वेळापूर्वी तुम्हाला एक्सप्लेन केलं आहे बरं को इंटिग्रेटेड हॅज अ प्लांट सिलेक्टेबल मार्कर जीन द टार्गेट जीन द राईट बॉर्डर अँड इकोलाय ओरिजिन ऑफ डी एन ए रेप्लिकेशन अँड बॅक्टेरियल सिलेक्टेड मार्कर जीन को को इंटिग्रेटेड वेक्टर कंबाईन्स विथ द मॉडिफाईड डिसाईड डिसाम टी आय प्लाझ्मिक दॅट लॅक बोथ 
the tumor producing genes and the right border of the tdna within a agrobacterium uh, agro tumor the entire cloning vector become integrated into the disarm ti plasmid to perform recombinant ti plasmid je ata mi tumhala explain ha co integrated vector ahe baga वीर रिजन आहे एग्रोबैक्टीरियम ट्यूमर पेशेंट्स आहे ओके राइट बॉर्डर वापरलेला आहे लेफ्ट बॉर्डर वापरलेला आहे आणि हे इकोलायचं ओरिजिन हे दोन जे आहे हे दोन्ही जे आहेत हे इथे कंबाइन केलेला आहे दुसऱ्या याच्या इथे बघा हा दोन्ही ही याच्यामध्ये आलेले आहेत आता बघा इथे एग्रोबैक्टीरियम ट्यूमर पेशेंटचा ओरिजिन आहे इकोलायचा ओरिजिन आहे आणि या पद्धतीने हे रिकंबाइन करावं लागतं आणि मग हे कल्चर वापरलं जातं डीएनए ट्रान्सफर ओके आता ही जे वीडियो आहे आता हा
So uh, this is all about the uh, transformation techniques. Uh, actually, this was uh, video was taken from the YouTube. Okay, so uh, this is the particle gun. Okay. So particle gun. This is the direct technique of uh, DNA transfer. So in, in that um, we are uh, saying that uh, this is the chamber. Okay. This one is the meter. Okay. तो हाँ चेम्बर मधे बार चेम्बर मधे अपने जे का कोकल्टिवेट कराए कि डिजायर जीन पाजे तो इतने हा जो है हा जो मीटर दाखिल है तो ये वैक्यूम तैयार कराए आत मधे हा जो है इतने हेलिम गैस प्रोवाइड के मधे एक बोल्ट सारे फाइन डिस्क आ रपचर डिस्क अस्कोन डिस्क आता रपचर डिस्क वरती डीएनए चाहे प्लाज्मीट टाका एक तो दोन मैक्रो मीटर नर हा जो प्रेसर क्रिएट हो बंबाट कराए जेनेकर गोल्ड पार्टिकल तो डीएनए कोट के प्लाज्मीट कोट के जेनेकर प्लाज्मीड क्या प्लांट सेल मध्य जर तिथे इंटीग्रेटेड होते हे डायरेक्ट मेथड है ये अगोदर जो वीडियो दाखला होता तो इनडायरेक्ट मेथड है ओके हा मजा पेपर है जिथे मैं सी आई सी आर लाइक पांच सौ वर्ष काम के एग्रोमेट्री मिलिटेड ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ट्राइवल एसी जीन जो होता बैचलर्स थ्रू इंजीनियर सा जो डिप्लॉइड क्वार्टर मध्य ट्रांसफर के दोन हजार नौ मध्य हा पेपर पब्लिश सोर्सेस होते कि जिथु मैं ये घेल यूट्यूब सोर्स होता एक बायोटेक्स आर्टिकल नेट वर घ थैंक यू क्या प्रश्न अल तो विचार थैंक यू दस टीवर सर हेलो सर थैंक यू सर छान डिलिवरी के लिए लेक्चर से कॉम्प्लेक्स टॉपिक सोप्या भाषे समझ संगने का प्रयत्न होता uh students if you have any queries questions kindly ask i think no queries mala asa vatte ki mulanna samajhlele nahi hai barobar सर चैट बॉक्स मध्य एक प्रश्न है संकल्प गजघाटे नीचार यस इट इज पॉसिबल सेकेंडरी मेटाबोलाइट सा तुम्हारा एग्रो बैक्टेरियम रायजोजीन वगे कारण तो रूट इंड्यूस कर रायजोजीन जो रूट इंड्यूस करे तो तुम्ही कल्चर मीडियम वरती ग्रो करा तो रीट रूट इंड्यूस हो सैकंडरी मेटाबॉलाइट कर सीम्पल मेथड है ट्यूमिकेशन तुम्हारा तो रायजोजीन वो हेलो हाँ संकल्प संकल्प गाले का तुझा गाले का तुला सरन ने कैसे संगीत लेते डिड यू गेट इट यस मैम ओके एनीबडी एल्स एनीबडी एल्स ओके okay thank you sir thank you for your lucid presentation and for sparing time for us thank you very much okay sir thank you uh, principal and uh, organizing members also sir thank you thank you sir thank you for uh, showing uh, the live demonstration actually madam the, this topic is very um, critical so that's why i have used this um, youtube to show the uh, to explain this uh, transformation technique to the students thank you ma'am and thank you sir
still uh, still uh, it is it was very nice sir okay thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you So friends, the third uh, resource person is uh, joining shortly. So we just to announce a five minutes break for the students. And then we will rejoin.
आहे आपल्या नवीन भागामध्ये तुम्ही माझ्या हातात काय ओळखलंच असेल तुमच्या आजीबाईंकडे पणजीबाईंच्या नऊवारीच्या कन्वर्टीला ही अशी चंची तुम्ही पाहिलीच असेल आता चेन वगैरे सोडा सध्याच्या मॉडर्न जमान्यातली ही आहे पण ह्याच्यात काय असायचं माहितीये का तुम्हाला असे खूप सारे औषधी म्हणा किंवा वनस्पती वगैरे ह्यात असायचे आजच्या भाषेत ओव्हर द काउंटर मेडिसिन आपण ज्याला म्हणतो की घरच्या घरी जी फर्स्ट एड व्हायची डॉक्टरांना दाखवायच्या आधी अचानकपणे जेव्हा कोणी आजारी पडायचं आजीबाई आपल्या ह्याच बटव्यातून अनेक अनेक वनस्पती देऊन घरच्या घरी थोडाफार आराम मिळायचा मग आपण वैद्यांकडे डॉक्टरांकडे तेव्हा जायचो तर आजचा आपला भाग असाच काहीसा असणार आहे याच वनस्पतींबद्दल ज्याला आपण आजच्या भाषेत मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स म्हणतो तर पाहूया आपण कुठे आलोय आणि आजचा भाग काय स्पेशल आहे आपण पाहतो की मी एकटं काम कधीच करत नाही तर चला आज पाहूया माझ्या बरोबर कोण हा इंटरव्ह्यू को कंडक्ट करत आहे तर भेटा अंजली शिंदे ताकवाले मिसेस इंडिया टू थाउजंड एटीन मॉडेलिंग आणि लाईफ कोच आहेत ह्यांचं प्रोफेशन पण आज आपण गार्डन गप्पा त्यांना ओढून घेतलेला आहे तर वेळ तर अजिबात नसतो मॅडम ना बघूया काय करतात आज पल्लवी नेहमी मला एक छानशी अपॉर्च्युनिटी देते आणि आज शिवाजी कॉलेज यांचं बॉटनिकल गार्डन आम्ही आमच्या दोघींच्या याच्यामध्ये कव्हर करूया सो नक्की त्याचा आनंद घ्या थँक्यू मी पल्लवी दिवेकर तुमच्या सगळ्यांचं स्वागत करते गार्डन गप्पाच्या आपल्या नवीन भागामध्ये तुम्ही माझ्या हातात काय ओळखलंच असेल तुमच्या आजी हॅलो
Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in this session, we have again one uh, online lecture, and the resource person is Dr. M. V. Kaule, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Hello, Kavale sir. Okay, he is joined now. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, okay. you are audible. So, our third resource person for this guest lecture series is Dr. M. V. Kavale sir. I am briefly introducing uh, him. Sir is working as associate professor and head department of botany, D. B. Science College, Gondia. Affiliated to RTM Nagpur University, Nagpur. Uh, and sir has around 14 years of teaching and research experience. Completed one UGC minor research project, and also work in uh, a national laboratory prior to joining this uh, position. He has uh, more than 20 research papers and two book chapters to his credit, and also presented 28. Uh, papers in various national and international conferences. Under his guidance, uh, one student has awarded PhD, and uh, around I think four are working for the PhD. So uh, we are uh, very much fortunate to have uh, an expertise person, expert person like Dr. Kaule sir with us to deliver the um, lecture on TLC and its application. Uh, uh, sir, over to you. Welcome, sir. Hello. Am I audible? To you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, first of all, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my name is Mahesh Kaudi. Just uh, sir has uh, just now introduced me. So, uh, first of all, I I want to express my sincere uh, thanks to uh, principal of this college, uh, Shivaji College, Akola, Dr. A. L. Kulat, Kulat, Kulat sir, and uh, Madam Umale, Professor and Head, Botany Department, and Dr. D. K. Koche, sir. I, I wish to express my sincere thanks to all of uh, these three persons who uh, invited me and uh, invited me for delivering this lecture. So my today's topic is thin layer chromatography and its application. So question is why this thin layer topic, I have selected this thin layer chromatography topic. Actually, uh, during my PhD work, I have used this thin layer chromatography uh, in uh, means many times as well as in uh, means thoroughly. I, I know this technique thoroughly and I wanted to uh, explain this uh, uh, the loop and holes of this uh, thin layer chromatography to all all of you so our today's topic is thin layer chromatography and its application now first of all what is chromatography we means uh, all of you might be knowing uh, paper chromatography you might have heard about the chromatography particularly paper chromatography so that is the basic form of chromatography. There are number of number of types of chromatographies are available in the scientific field, scientific world. So first of all, we know that meaning of uh, the literal meaning of this word chromatography is writing in color or color writing. This uh, technique was first time discovered by one Russian scientist that is Mikhail Sevet in 1900. Now, he had given this term or uh, name of this uh, technique. He has given the uh, name to it, this technique that is chromatography. And why, why he had given a name uh, chromatography to this technique? Because primarily or initially he worked on the plant pigments. What he did, he 
separate the plant pigments with the help of uh, with the help of this technique and when he separated those uh, those pigment uh, with the help of this technique he observed the different colors color bands and therefore he had given the name that is chromatography chroma means color and graphy means writing he observed different colors pigment colors like green color orange color yellow color and that's why he had given the name chromatography chroma chroma means color and graphy means writing now what is chromatography chromatography is nothing but a, a collection of techniques there are number of techniques are there okay paper chromatography is there uh, then thin layer chromatography is there uh, then gas chromatography is there liquid chromatography is there column chromatography number of chromatography techniques are there but most of these techniques most means except paper and thin layer all the remaining techniques all remaining chromatographies are advanced advanced type of chromatographies advanced means those needs uh, i means uh, costly equipments if you want to uh, if you want to perform gas chromatography you need a, a costlier e uh, equipment like that is called as a gas chromatogram gc in short it is called as a gc likewise if you want to perform uh, hplc that is high performance liquid chromatography you need to pu purchase a costly equipment that is hplc so these are the Uh, advanced uh, techniques advanced techniques starting from the gel chromatography column chromatography ion exchange chromatography all these chromatographies are the advanced techniques and needs the equi uh, instrumentation costly equi instrumentation but out of these two techniques are there that is paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography these two techniques are very easy to perform these two techniques do not need costly equipments and they these two techniques or you can separate out the uh, chemicals or the compound with the help of these two techniques at basic laboratory level basic laboratory level means you don't need many um, uh, you don't need much equipment or instrumentation so we will discuss the thin layer chromatography today out of these out of all these chromatographies we will discuss today thin layer chromatography so first of all we should understand we should try to understand the principle basic principle behind the thin layer chromatography and uh, in this case i want to tell you that the principle of the thin layer chromatography is more or less similar to that of the paper chromatography there is no uh, any difference between the paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography except one thing okay except one thing one one point is there that is different otherwise both paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography are uh, as good as same and out of you uh, most of the uh, most of the students means most of the students of bsc uh, bsc as well as msc botany uh, i i hope that i uh, know that they uh, they might have done this paper chromatography experiment during their uh, uh, that is sixth semester or uh, third year of bsc or uh, during their msc msc course okay so the paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography have same principle only difference is there in one thing that is the stationary phase is different in paper paper chromatography and uh, in thin layer chromatography only thing is that the uh, stationary phase is different now what is stationary phase now as far as chromatography is concerned i am trying to explain you what is uh, stationary phase and mobile phase as far as chromatography is concerned in all chromatographies there are two phases are important first phase is stationary phase and second phase is mobile phase two phases are required in all all these chromatographies stationary phase and mobile phase and with the help of these two phases we can separate out the separate out the components of the mixture components of the mixture so these two phases are required and in case of paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography the stationary phase is different in paper chromatography we use paper watman paper as a stationary phase that is made up of from cellulose 
what one what one uh, paper or chromatography paper is made up of from or any paper is made up of from cellulose and that is the stationary phase in paper chromatography while in thin layer chromatography paper is not there here one either glass slide or plus uh, glass sheet glass slide be use kar sakte hai ya fir glass uh, sheet okay uh, glass plate you can call it as a glass plate either glass plate or plastic plate or aluminum aluminium plate you can use any of these three okay and on that glass plate or on that plastic plate or aluminium plate one thin layer of uh, one thin layer of silica gel is applied silica gel okay so this is the uh, stationary phase in thin layer chromatography okay so we will discuss this thing in uh, uh, detail later on but first of all we uh, should know what is uh, thin layer chromatography means the definition of thin layer chromatography thin layer chromatography can be defined as the method of separation or identification of mixture of component into individual component by using finely divide, divided adsorbent solid solid spread over a glass plate and liquid as a mobile phase so this is a technique of separation of molecules from a mixture means if you have a mixture of any any chemical component if you have a mixture of any uh, any two three chemical component you can easily separate out those chemical components uh, individually with the help of this thin layer chromatography method okay so this thin layer chromatography as well as paper chromatography is based on the principle of solubility and uh, dissolubility means which which component of your mixture is soluble in the mobile phase that move ahead and uh, the another molecule which is less soluble remain uh, re remain nearby nearby means that Uh, that do not uh, travel more uh, more distance so with the help of solubility okay on the basis of solubility this chemicals or the chemical component of the mixtures get separated on the uh, either on the paper or on the thin layer uh, thin layer uh, thin layer that is the um, tlc plate okay so this technique is based on the principle of adsorption and uh, partition or both depending upon the adsorbent its treatment and nature of solvent is employed the component with more affinity move towards the station uh, move towards that is uh, affinity towards the stationary phase travels slower and components with a less affinity towards stationary phase travels uh, faster okay travels faster so this is the principle the uh, the chemical component which is more more soluble in the mobile phase travels fast and the chemical component which is less soluble in the mobile phase travels slow or travels uh, less okay so how to how to perform this thin layer chromatography now we will discuss how to how to perform so there are steps five steps are there first of all to prepare uh developing container means you need a chromatography chamber for for performing the chromatography uh, experiment thin layer chromatography apparatus uh, experiment we need a chromatography chamber okay with the help of that we will prepare developing container then we need to prepare a thin layer chromatography plate that is tlc plates then uh, we we will have to spot the uh, mixture on that tlc plate we have to load that uh, sample you can call it as a sample or chemical mixture on that tlc plate and then run that tlc plate or that um, plate with the mixture in the chromatography chamber okay and at the end step number 5 is to visualize the spot visualize the spot means record uh, you can uh, you will have to re record the readings or observations so these are the steps of thin layer chromatography experiment now for this how to prepare a tlc plate tlc plates means in this uh, as far as paper chromatography is concerned in paper chromatography we will we we have a ready made ready made already available paper is available but in tlc 
you will have to, uh, you will have to prepare the tlc plates okay there is another option you can purchase the tls uh, tlc plates from the market okay in the scientific market that is uh, in the market you will get uh, aluminium plates with the silica coated aluminium plates those are ready made ready made uh, tlc plates are there so in tlc a plastic glass plastic or glass or aluminium sheet sheets are coated with the thin layer of silica gel either pre coated aluminium plates are available in market one can purchase that okay so um, in market the uh, already pre coated aluminium plates are available you can purchase that also or we can prepare these plates in our laboratory also so by applying the thin layer of silica gel on the glass plate or on the plastic plate one can prepare prepare the tlc plates in the laboratory and for this uh, we will have to prepare the silica gel slurry in water in the ratio of 1 is to 2 1 gram of silica gel and 2 ml of water in this ratio we will have to prepare a slurry completely totally mixed slurry and then apply that slurry on the plain glass plate or on the plastic plate with the help of applicator or spreader there is one instrument come that is called as the applicator or spreader i will show you the photograph of that uh, uh, that is instrument okay and then with the help of that spreader or applicator we can we can develop the thin layer of silica gel on the glass plate or plastic plate after development uh, after drying means once you have uh, uh, means uh, once once you have developed the uh, thin uh, tlc plate means after you, you have uh, spread the that uh, uh, silica gel silica gel slurry on the glass plate then you will have to uh, put that plate for activation okay after drying the plate has to be activate activate means you will have to uh, put that plate in a oven by uh, oven for heating Uh, at 110 degree centigrade for 6 hours this process is called as the activation of um, tlc plate okay so here you can see that this is the glass plate applied with the silica gel slurry and this is the applicator you can uh, see this applicator uh, we will have to uh, we will have to means uh, put that slurry inside inside this chamber inside this chamber and uh, rotate this knob in this side okay this is the chamber where you you will have to uh, put the slurry silica gel slurry inside this uh, chamber and then rotate this uh, knob uh, towards the lower side and uh, run this uh, applicator or spreader on the glass it will produce the uh, uniformly thick uh, uh, that is uh, uniformly thick um, layer of silica gel on that glass okay so this is the process of preparing uh, tlc plate now then come to the development of tlc plate in this technique a small dot or line of sample solution has to be placed on the glass plate coated with the silica gel using a capillary tube or micro pipette then what we do you might have done paper chromatography in that paper also what we do Uh, from the lower side we keep a distance of either 2 cm or 2 uh, 2 and 1/2 cm after um, by keeping that uh, distance uh, from the lower side we put a uh, pencil dot and with the help of uh, capillary tube or micro pipette we load our sample sample uh, means uh, either leaf extract or you can prepare a amino acid mixture okay you can load that amino acid mixture uh, mixture uh, mixture of components of amino acids or by uh, leaf extract of uh, spinach you can load that uh, extract on the lower side of 2.5 cm away from the lower side you will have to put in the center okay load that extract in the paper or on the tlc plate this area of application should be kept as small as possible for sharp, sharper and greater re resolution Uh, when when you load that sample on the uh, glass plate then in that you will have to keep uh, this thing in your mind that you will have to dry that spot every time before loading the sec uh, second 
second uh, uh, second uh, sample okay you will have to dry that sample or dry uh, dry that spot every time the sample loaded plate has to be placed in a chromatography chamber with the solvent then you will have to put that chem uh, that plate in the chamber where already we will have uh, we, we will have to develop, uh, prepare a mobile phase mobile phase what is mobile phase i have already explained you the uh, stationary phase but mobile phase means a solution solution or the solvent solvent which run across the uh, thin layer uh, tlc plate run uh, across the uh, tlc plate okay so that solvent uh, uh, can uh, can be of various types various types of solvents are used but most probably most of the time in tlc or in paper chromatography we use non polar solvents non polar solvents like petroleum ether non polar solvents like benzene hexane toluene even chloroform even so these are the different solvents we use the decision of which which solvent we will have to use is it depends on what what we will have to separate out depending on the chemicals which we will have to separate out uh we will have to separate out we uh we use or we select the uh, solvents okay so the sample loaded in the plate has to be placed in the chromatography chamber with the solvent as the solvent rises through the silica gel it carries the sample mixture along with it so when this sample runs when this solvent runs through the tlc plate it takes or it carries the chemicals present in that mixture along with it okay so in tlc a, sol a solid phase that is the adsorbent is coated on through the solid support that is a thin sheet of glass or plastic or aluminum as a thin layer of 0.25 mm thick for example if we are taking one example a mixture of a and b uh, has to be separated is dissolved in a solvent and uh, and the resulting solution is spotted onto the thin layer plate near the bottom a solvent or a mixture of solvent is called elutant is allowed to flow up the plate by capillary action at all times the solid will adsorb at certain fraction of each component of the mixture and remainder will be in a solution any one molecule will spend part of the time si sitting still on the adsorbent and the remainder moving up the plate with the solvent okay the substance that is strongly adsorbed say a will have a greater fraction of its molecule adsorbed at one, uh, any one time and thus any one molecule of a will spend more time sitting still and less time moving and vice versa separation of mixture of in microgram quantities by movement of solvent across the flat surface component migrate at different rates due to differences in the solubility adsorption see this is this is the uh, photograph which you uh, which i am trying to explain you how we uh, how we load the samples in the lower side okay for example here is the uh, sample number 1 here is the sample number 2 likewise sample number 3 and 4 and then we put this whole plate into the uh, chromatography chamber okay so that chromatography chamber in that mobile phase is present that is the uh, solvent is present and that solvent travels on that silica gel travels through that silica gel by the capillary action the with the help of that um, solubility and capillary action some chemical components present in the mixture or the sample travels fast and some chemicals or some uh, chemical components travels slow okay so it depends on it depends on the solubility of that chemical component which is present in the mixture along with the mobile phase now what mobile phase we will have to take what mobile phase combination we will have to take that depends upon the solubility of chemical component present in the mixture okay so uh, what one thing i want to tell you here that uh, here generally silica gel is a polar component silica gel has a polar nature nature of the silica gel is po polar and that's why we what we do we use a non polar mobile phases non polar mobile phases just now i have told you some chemicals like benzene hexane petroleum ether these are the non polar uh, 
uh, non polar things or non polar sol solvents and these solvents we use for uh, for uh, preparing the mobile phase so the choice of mobile phase is largely uh, empirical but general rules can be formulated a mixture of organic solvent and water with the addition of acid base chemical complex complexing agent to optimize the solubility of the component of a mixture can be used for example good separation of polar and ionic solutes can be achieved with the mixture of water and n butanol so it depends it depends what we will have to separate these are the chemical components these are the solvents which shows different polarity starting from highest non polar and hexane then cyclohexane toluene so if you if you um, um, if you um, go from n hexane to the water you will see that uh, non polar to polar uh, solvents are uh, means shown here that is water is the most polar then there is acetic acid then somewhat non polar methanol then propanol then acetonitrile these are slowly one by one non polar solvents are there so we use different solvents and these solvents uh, these solvents uh, uh, choice of these solvents depends upon the uh, what we will have to separate out okay so if we uh, we have loaded the sample here and uh, uh, then put that uh, put that uh, tlc plate in the chromatography chamber what what will happens the slowly this um, mobile phase start running through this um, silica gel above from upward direction okay uh, run towards the upward direction and when this mobile phase run towards upward direction slowly it takes the most soluble chemical component fast for example this yellow color is showing at the highest position what what it means uh, the chemical uh, yellow color chemical is most solu soluble in the mobile phase that's why it running fast while this pink color chemical it is running next to it then orange uh, color chemical then blue color chemical and uh, last one is uh, this purple color chemical what it shows this purple color chemical is least soluble in mobile phase least soluble less soluble and that's why it is running very slow okay so this is the uh, this is the separation of chemicals in tlc plate on the basis of their solubility and adsorption okay so what we do we put this uh, uh, tlc plates in the chamber and then that chamber uh, that chamber that chamber has to be uh, saturated first of all we will have to saturate that chamber uh, with the solvent and then we will have to put that um, tlc plate in, inside that chamber and then the running of that sample takes place okay then after completion of the running after completion of the uh, that means once that uh, that solvent reach the end point end point means the highest position then what we do we take out that tlc plate out of that chromatography chamber and then we try to detect the which chemical compound those uh, spots spots are for detecting the chemical uh, compo components or the spots on that uh, tlc plate we need a, we have different methods okay there are various methods of detecting the compounds okay these spots uh, the spots which appear appear now can detected on account of color that develop for example if you are separating the pigments then you will directly you will get uh, directly you will get the color colorful spots directly you will get the colorful spots for example you might have done uh, the separation of pigments like chlorophyll a chlorophyll b Uh, then carotene and xanthopin in paper chromatography you might have observed the different color uh, pigments on the paper likewise here also you will get different colors if you are using colorful uh, chemicals but if you if you are uh, you you are doing some secondary metabolite work for example medicinal value of any medicinal plant you are separating medicinal compounds from the uh, plant then you will means you will do not get the colorful components you need a, a certain techniques okay some chemicals some chemical compounds show visible colors like plant pigments and they appear directly while other needs detecting reagents to be sprayed on it 
and uh, in other cases for example if you are working on some flavonoids if you are working on some alkaloids for example if you are working on alkaloids you you will have to spray dragendorf reagent on that plate you need to spray dragendorf reagent dragendorf reagent is one reagent which is which uh, which gives you alkaloids okay so that is the that is the uh, uh, spraying reagent or detecting reagent but if you are working on the flavonoids flavonoids means th this is the medicinal compound present in many uh, many plants so flavonoids you need uv light means those spots of flavonoids can be visibilized only in the U ultraviolet radiation uv light okay so while uh, other needs detecting reagent to be sprayed on it after reacting with the spray reagent they develop colors spray with the 25 or 50 uh, 25 to 50% sulfuric acid in ethanol and heating gives you the spots on the tlc plate then iodine vapors are also used for uh, use as a universal method iodine vapors are used for detecting the spots on the tlc plate this is a common method and this is considered as a universal method some other methods are also available like uv light absorption fluorescence radioactivity these are the other methods for detecting the chemical compounds another one thing which uh, is very important as far as tlc and paper chromatography is concerned that is detection uh, calculation of retardation factor or relative trend identification of known compounds may be made up made on the basis of rf that is what is rf rf is the distance traveled by the substance divided by the distance traveled by the solvent trend okay so this is the rf rf means retardation factor or it is also called as a relative trend relative in order to calculate the rf we will have to take the distance from the origin up to the spot and origin up to the that is uh, solvent trend solvent trend means the highest position of that solvent where that solvent reach the rf value is remain constant for a given compound under standard condition so rf is very important see here i have shown you how to calculate the rf for example this is the this is the uh, tlc plate and this is the position of origin that is here we have loaded the sample okay and then when when this sample run one spot appear here another spot appear here another one here okay so likewise the spots distributed what we have to do we will have to calculate the distance in centimeter between the first spot and the origin second spot and the origin third spot and the origin and up to the solvent front up to the solvent front and then for example spot a okay sample a if you if you want to calculate the rf value for spot a what you will have to do the distance between the spot one and uh, spot a and the origin divided by the solvent trend that is 2 cm distance is there between the origin and spot a then 2 divided by the phi u that is the distance traveled by the solvent okay 2 divided by phi u that is 0.40 is the rf value for a sample a okay likewise for sample b sample c sample d we will have to calculate the rf values of all the samples okay all the spots not samples all the spots okay and the rf values of most of the chemi uh, chemical compounds are fixed for uh, standard conditions standard condition of temperature or the moisture okay so rf values are most of the time fixed see this this is the photograph which shows that how these chemicals get separated on the tlc plate these are the different pigments which appear colorful for example these are the xanthophylls then chlorophyll a chlorophyll b pheophytin and carotin these are the separated pigments on the tlc plate okay so this you can see very uh, and easily understandable okay this technique is is very easy as well as understandable you can quantify uh, this technique is qual uh, this technique is useful in quality analysis as well as quantity quantity analysis also we can we can use this technique for quantitative estimation also so what are the different applications of tlc tlc uh tlc ke applications kya hai where we can use this tlc technique okay tlc is used for the separation of inorganic ions 
used for the separating cat ionic and ionic purely covalent species and also some organic derivatives of the metals separation of amino acids can be done with the help of tlc separation of vitamins can be done with the help of tlc even the tlc is used for quantitative analysis also just now i have told you the quantitative analysis can also be done with the help of tlc see these are, these are the photographs which shows how the actual photographs how these uh, tlc plates can be developed okay this is one spot this is another spot see during uh, calculation of rf value what we will have to do we will have to count the distance between the center of the this circle this spot center of this spot up to the origin center of the spot up to the origin that is the distance traveled by the that uh, spot okay likewise here also there are different color spots are developed here is the yellowish color yellowish orange color spot is there then this is bluish color this is greenish blue this is yellowish green here are also some spots are there so this type of spots are developed in the tlc then tlc is also applied it is used for the separation of all classes classes of natural product products it is established as a as an analytical tool in modern pharmacopoeia particularly acids alcohols glycols alkaloids amines macromolecules like amino acids protein peptides and antibiotics are separated with for checking the purity of sample for as a purification process examination of reaction for identifying organic compounds extensively used as an identification test or test for purity it is also used for checking the distillation fractions so th these are these are the different applications of tlc see this is very simple technique of separating the chemical compounds this photograph shows how easy this technique is then question arises when tlc is used because uh, where where we can use tlc that's uh, we have already discussed but when particularly when the substances are non volatile or low in volatile volatility if any substance or mixture is low volatile or non volatile then this technique is used the substances are strongly polar or medium polarity or non polar or ionic in any type of substances we can use tlc a large number of samples must be analyzed simultaneously cost effectively and within a limited period of time if you have a large number of samples and it it becomes it becomes uh, difficult to uh, carry out all these analysis with the help of gc or hplc or lc Uh, if you are uh, doing any work and uh, if you want to uh, perform gc lc or hplc that becomes a costlier and therefore this tlc is cost effective and therefore this technique is used the samples to be analyzed would damage the uh, damage or destroy the column of liquid chromatography or gc if your sample is damaging lc or gc columns then the tlc can be performed the solvents used would attack the sorbents in lc column packings then then also we can use tlc the substances in the material being analyzed cannot be detected by the method of lc gc or only with the great difficulty then also we can use tlc after the chromatography all the components of the sample have to be detectable remain at the start or migrate in front of the uh, with the front then also we can use tlc the components of the mixture of substances after separation how to be detected individually or how to be subjected to various detection method one after the another so then also we can use tlc and even if the electricity is not available then then also we can use tlc where tlc is used tlc is used in the field of pharmaceuticals and drug research particularly in the identification and purity testing of the chemical components it is useful uh, in food analysis particularly in the determination of pesticides fungicides in the drinking water or the residues in the vegetables salad meat vitamins in the soft drinks margarine etc environmental analysis particularly if you are doing research in the ground water analysis determination of pollutants from the abundant metals likewise here also in the environmental analysis also we can use tlc even in the cosmetology due to law, uh, raw materials and end products preservative surfactants 
fatty acid and constituents of the perfumes we can use the tlc analysis analysis of inorganic substances particularly determination of inorganic ions clinical chemistry forensic chemistry in biochemistry here also the thin layer chromatography can be applicable now there is one advanced technique of tlc that is called as the hp tlc hp tlc means high performance thin layer chromatography this is the advanced version of tlc and here we need a costly equipment that is called as hp tlc equipment this photograph shows the hp tlc equipment here we need applicator then uh, developer then uh, detector these are the different uh, components of hp tlc hp tlc is a sophisticated and automated form of tlc efficient separation in short time okay hp tlc is a updated form of tlc that provides superior separation power using optimized coating material novel procedures for mobile phase feeding layer conditioning and improved sample application the basic difference between conventional tlc and hp tlc is only in particle and pore size of the sorbent okay in hp tlc pore size is small so that separation is uh, separation is um, more efficient okay the principle of separation is sep is similar to that of tlc adsorption it is very useful in quantitative and qualitative analysis of pharmaceuticals so this is the hp tlc there are some advantages of hp tlc also it promotes high separation efficiency resolution shorter developing time lower amount of mobile phase is required enormous flexibility is there parallel separation of many samples with minimum time requirement simplified sample uh preparation due to single use stationary phase so these are the some advantages of hp tlc but at uh -huh, this is the last uh, slide which shows the how this hp tlc working is there there th this is the flow chart which shows that how to perform the hp tlc uh, sampling okay sample and standard preparation then application of sample and then application of sample and standard chromatographic development detection of spots scanning documentation so all these steps are involved in the hp tlc method see this hp tlc is costly equipment and we need uh, costly chemicals also for performing hp tlc but tlc is the basic one and we can easily work out in any laboratory uh, per, uh, with the help of tlc method okay so this is uh hptlc these are the applications of hptlc separation so thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak in front of uh, your students thank you very much sir thank you very, very much madam thank you dr mahesh very i hope i hope that uh, my presentation is uh, fruitful for you definitely definitely it will help us for the uh, preparation uh, now the presentation is over uh, students if you have any question you can ask hello hello namaste sir namaste madam namaste madam uh, thank you sir uh, welcome ma'am uh, informative uh, talk with the students yes मैडम जस्ट बीएससी और एमएससी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बनाया था नहीं सर बहुत अच्छा हुआ आई लाइक इट सब मतलब बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट से उनका सब क्लियर हो गया यस सर यस मैम ऑल बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स दे गॉट क्लियर थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सर हेलो स्टूडेंट करने का प्रश्न है का ढाले सर Dr. M. K. Deshakivar sir, for their lucid presentation and uh, guidance to our students. I thanks to Dr. L. Kulat sir, uh, principal of of our college, for allowing us to conduct this online lecture series. I also thanks to Dr. S. Rahul sir, 
for their uh, for his untiring support uh, i thank to dr uh, kokate madam head of the department botany sri shivaji college of arts commerce and science akola and other uh, faculty members dr patil madam dr ok sir dr rathod sir chokhande sir and patil madam and all ad hoc teachers for their uh, untiring efforts to make this event fruitful last but not the least i thanks all my dear students for their patience listening and uh, uh, necessary cooperation i thanks to all the uh, all and everyone who work for, for making this event successful thank you thank you everyone students you can leave now